Today I am Myrna Peterson, 67 years young, a quadriplegic in a wheelchair, but I'm not dead yet. I've been known to be a dreamer at a very early age, but many of my dreams look drastically different now than intended years ago. Adversity can be the root of all self-destruction, or it can be your inner strength. My life was really smooth until I was about eighth grade, when my brother Leon, number six of 11 of us, was in a serious baseball accident. He was playing for Luther College at St. Olaf, and he was hit in the helmet with a pitched ball. Nothing was traumatically wrong at the time, but as they were going home, they stopped at Rochester St. Mary's Hospital. He walked in the door with his coach and went into convulsions. They successfully took 250 cc's of blood out of his head that night and four days later took pressure out of his brain as well. Well, he laid comatose for 12 days, not being able to control his temperature. My parents immediately left from southern Iowa and moved to Rochester for the nine months that Leon was there. He made remarkable progress mentally in those nine months, but he never regained any physical use of his hands or his legs. Well, I was in eighth grade, and while my parents were away, they only came home very few times within those nine months. And there were three brothers and myself still in high school and grade school, and a couple brothers running the farm, and my three sisters were already gone. So when Leon came home at Christmas time, he had a catheter and trachea in his throat and needed multiple shots and medication. Well, in order for my parents to be gone at the same time, that meant I was going to take over as his nurse. And it just is what we did. You didn't think twice, well, I guess that's how life is going to be. Well, Leon persevered through all of that. My parents took him to every baseball game my other brothers played in, and myself, all the way through college, my softball career. But he never wavered. First thing he could communicate by an electric typewriter if we held his arm was, can I go to Rochester, have a surgery, that can, I can hold a baseball in my hand again. Wow, that pretty, pretty much set everyone back. My parents had a strong faith, and he went, he went to church every Sunday, did those kinds of things. Well, along that time, in that course of that 20 years, there were other tragedies within the family. My oldest brother was killed. My dad had a heart attack, massive heart attack, 10 years later. My mom, remarkable as she was, went through a double mastectomy. She had 12 inches of her bowel tract taken out for fear of cancer, uh, cataracts in both eyes, ended up later on with a massive stroke that paralyzed her whole right side. Still lived to be 95 years old, <coughs> making Kringles and Lefsa and, and that right up until the end. Um, my oldest sister died of lymphoma cancer. All of those adversities, you know, were things that life happens, but what do you do? You keep going on because that's what, that's what the, the message that my parents, you know, they lived by that. They had a very strong faith. Well, um, little did I know that my 20 years with Leon as his caregiver and uh, confident he was my everything, my hero, um, and the hardships within my family would give me the perseverance and stamina to face a life-changing journey of my own. On June 21st, 1925, our family changed forever. I was fortunate to have four wonderful children, angels, who 
have always been my life. And they, with the help of them, we made through this remarkable journey. I was coming home after a really busy day one Wednesday, and a vehicle was coming right at me. And so I went off to the right, but the road was under construction. Actually, I was looking for a new route because I was going to train for the Twin Cities Marathon. And I thought, well, I'll go up tonight instead of waiting till the morning. It was about midnight. A car was coming at me, and as I said, I went to the right, but there was no shoulder. They were doing construction. The Ford Ranger went into the ditch, came upon another driveway, and it flipped 360 degrees one way, and then 360 degrees over top. So I ended up in the ditch on the opposite side, going south instead of north. Well, no one stopped, and my head boinked against the side of the, the driver window and couldn't get out because the door was lodged up against the highway. And uh, so I was able to manage to get out the passenger side, crawled through the monkey water, and it's pretty dark, a little after midnight. Well, God, it's you and me. And I was up to mucky water, up to my chin. Well, time passed. I don't remember it. But about 6 in the morning, a neighbor was going by in a semi, saw the dome light in my Ford Ranger, and um, called 911. The rescuers came, got me to Deer River, stabilized me there, airlifted me to Duluth. Well, I was there. I uh, don't remember that. That was in June. The first thing I remember was the 4th of July. And I recall a nurse coming in and all cheery. And she said, Myrna, we're going to get you out of bed today and uh, go celebrate the 4th of July. And I thought, hmm, freedom. What kind of freedom do I have? Him laying here, the only thing I could move was my head. I thought, looked out the window and I thought, Nah, it's not going to happen. I, I lost everything. I remember a wonderful life on two feet. And now I was going to live the rest of my life on four wheels. Not going to happen. Well, I turned, and I was at St. Mary's Hospital in Duluth. And I saw that crucifix on the wall. I thought, whoa, look at the sacrifice that guy made. Look what he endured. And then I thought of, my brother Leon, 20 years, doing nothing but enjoying everybody else's dreams. And my dad, you know, built four baseball diamonds on our field, on our farm, so all of us can enjoy a field of dreams of our own. My sister, who was like my second mom, 15 years older than me, a year and a half before my accident, died of lymphoma cancer. What was I going to do without her? And then I thought, people said, why you? You were so active doing everything. Why would God do anything like this to you? God didn't do it. <laughs> it was an accident. It happened. All of a sudden, my life changed and I never looked back. So I thought, why not me? I've had all these heroes ahead of me that I could do this. This is going to be a piece of cake. <laughs> I said, OK, let's get in that chair. Let's go outside. Well, there were a lot of other complications along the way. I was walking with a platform walker by November, Thanksgiving, getting ready to go home for Christmas. So excited to do that. And all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, I had these horrible spasms in my body. My arms and legs were going all over and hurting my neck. Well, they didn't know what the reason was for. Sent me down to the University of Minnesota to have a baclofen pump put underneath my abdomen with a catheter that went around to the back, went up the, the spinal column, dripped liquid baclofen all over my muscles to anesthetize them so that they wouldn't be flopping around. Well, a pump looks like a stainless steel hockey puck. You all know what those are like. 
and it was filled with this liquid baclofen. Well, it did camouflage the spasms, but it didn't cover up the pain. And so five and a half years went along, and my physical medicine doctor said, Mary, you should be teaching school again. I said, yeah, Skip, I'd love to, but I can't get off the couch. It hurts. Got all kinds of, of um, reasons. My kids would run into the room. The vibrations would send me crazy. Had mitts and everything covered my hand because any breeze was um, causing irritation. Well, five and a half years later, my primary doctor did an MRI, found that my original fusion had collapsed. Oh, great. Maybe as far back as December of 95. Well, they fixed that. They put a hairpin um, rod over top of the spinal column, and it uh, relieved the pressure so that I could get up but I was left with irreparable nerve damage. It's like a um, um, human pin cushion with thousands of pins from my chin all the way down to my toes and like a water balloon ready to pop. But the pain was not there because the fusion was finally fixed. Well, we went on and on and by, the, by that time, got up to be about 10 years and my my feet had atrophied and my hands had atrophied and it was hard for me to stand. So I met some really gifted orthopedic surgeons who did reconstructive surgery on my hands and feet. Uh, about uh, eight or nine, maybe ten surgeries within the next four years. And then my pump needed to be changed and all kinds of complications with that. It fell down one side, so they put it on the other side, spliced it in the middle, and now we're up to about 17 years. And I had these horrible headaches all the time. I thought, you know, what's going on here? Skip said, Mernie, you should really be back teaching school. <laughs> Boy, I'd love to, but I can't <coughs> handle my pain. Um, but it'll be all right. So we just plugged on, and my kids again were you know, would take me everywhere they could and um, help me out along. And I had a strong faith. I was still trying to do things that I thought I could. Well, finally we ended up with a, a new neurosurgeon that said we needed to get that rod taken out. Got that out, and it was just uh, so much freedom. I shortened the rod in my neck, so I had my head, I could do this again and that. Well, what do all these adversities uh, mean? People react to adversities in different ways. You could say, I've had enough, I quit no more, and turn to other self-gratifications, like drugs, alcohol, or even suicide and desperation. Since I was 14 year old, years old with Leanne, seriously injured and through uh, my brother's um, hardships, my family's hardships, I build up a perseverance that's unstoppable. Did I do it alone? No. I had help from my parents gone before me. Um, spiritual leaders, doctors, caregivers, my four angels and family. You see, none of us are promised tomorrow. We need to learn from yesterday and then live life for today in hopes for a better tomorrow. Don't forget to dream. Dream big. And use those creative juices inside each and every one of you to grow and learn to combat those problems of yesterday. Don't worry about people who might judge you. After all, there's only one judge that we need to answer to in the end tell you a cute little story. A friend of mine was babysitting a two-year-old, and she was questioning her sexuality at the time. And the little two-year-old said, I don't think I'm a boy. She thought, hmm, I wonder what that is. And she said, so what do you think you are? I think I'm a bird. <laughs> she said, well, okay, creatively, let's chirp and wing. 
feather wings and chirp like a bird. Well, I'm not identified by my wheelchair. I'm Myrna, and I, um, I am how I am. You need to live your life for who you are inside. I'm an adult. I'm not brain dead. I'm just in a wheelchair. Thank you very much for caring. I'm still very much involved in my church, youth, and programming, involved with two accredited service units, uh, active member of two groups working for social and just, racial injustice in our communities, involved in campus ministry, mobility mania, a new focus of mine. But just always keep remembering, dream big, follow your passion, work through any adversities, and make things happen. You can do it if you persevere to the end. Thank you very much for being part of this.